What's what? What's up? What's up? What's up, family? What's up, Sean? Can you hear me? What's up, Sean? You got me? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, I got you. I got you. You good? Yeah, what about yourself? How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Doing great. I can't complain. Uh, just trying to make some stuff happen, man. You know, making some stuff happen, working on some things. You know, got this time now to slow down and, and really focus on some stuff that we need to be focusing on, man. Right. That's what really, exactly. that's what's up, you know. Let me turn my volume up a little bit. How's how's uh, how's Shamika? Oh, she's doing real good. Good. We, good. It, it's been a, it's been a powerful morning already, man. Good. Good. That's been what it's about, man. Been a lot of prayers going on. A lot good. of. Uh, yeah. Good. 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 Yeah. So you it's guys now, I know you. Hopefully, you stand in place, and I know you're trying to get out and make your money, man. But what are, what are you doing right now? Right now, like I said, just basically, um, we just been in create create mode like we, okay. uh, we've been just staying parked here like i've been out of work i'll be able to go back to work tuesday okay so that's a blessing in that um just pretty much like i said we just been creating and just coming up with different ideas Good. so far as what to do like especially like when everything opens back up because i know it's gonna be a floodgate so far as a whole yes. lot of opportunity and stuff because it's gonna be a lot of eager people to go out and just enjoy themselves because a lot of people just been stuck in the house right they will be and uh i don't know if you caught a video i might have done about opportunities where i talk about how behind behind every problem lies an opportunity waiting to be discovered i did i did catch that yeah and, and that's true man see what we have to remember is that no matter what the situation is if there's a problem there's always going to be opportunities behind that problem right and what we have to do is look for the opportunities. That's that's why people, you know, create things. They, they, they find the opportunities behind the problems. You know, necessity is the mother of invention, right? Anytime there's a need for something, that's when somebody goes out and creates it and invents it, you know? Right. So coming out of this coronavirus thing, man, there's going to be huge, tremendous opportunities. And my point is that I want us to be in position to be able to, first of all, be looking for the opportunities. And then secondly, be able to be in a position that we can capitalize on some of those opportunities and take advantage of them. Because right. the opportunities don't just go away and fizzle up and you know dry up and wither away. They'll, if, you, if we don't take advantage of opportunities, other people will. And that's what's, so, that's what's happened so long in our community. So many opportunities, a lot of times people think that the black community is in the condition it's in right now because we just haven't had the same opportunities that other people have had. That's not true. We've had those same opportunities, but in, in some cases, we haven't taken advantage of the opportunities. Right. I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. Say you go into the black community and you see an old abandoned building. You know, you might, we might walk by that building every day and don't see an opportunity in it, right? And we might look at it and say, oh, man, it's just an old, worn-down building, you know, abandoned, vacant building. But, you know, let the Japanese or the Chinese come in our community, see that same building, and open up a hair care supply store right in that same building, then we'll be complaining about, oh man, they're coming in our community, you know, starting businesses. And But look, we had the same opportunity to do the exact same thing, but we just passed on it and somebody else came in and took advantage of that same opportunity. That's the point I'm making as far as opportunity. So you, 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 you hit the nail on the head, man, when you talked about, you know, this time is a time where you and Shamika should be really focusing on, okay, what are we going to do coming out of this thing? What are some of the opportunities that we will have? And there are tremendous opportunities for you right now coming out of this coronavirus thing. And it, it's going to be your job, you and her job, to sit down and really focus on what are those opportunities going to be? And how can we position ourselves to take advantage of those opportunities when we come out of this? Because guess what? If you don't, somebody else will. The exactly. same ideas. You, you and her might come up with the same, with some ideas, right? About how you can come out of this thing and take advantage of, of some opportunities. But if you don't act on it, faith without works is dead, right? If you don't act on it, those same ideas that you have, you'll see somebody else doing. And you'll be like, man, we had the same idea, but we didn't do nothing with it. 
you know right. so you don't want that to happen i'm gonna give it a couple more minutes man and uh it's only 11.04 i think the month said he was trying to get his internet to work uh let me see if my man general can join us this morning i'm not sure if he's i wanted him to be able to participate and uh i'm gonna try to reach out to him real quick and um and then there was another brother i wanted you all to meet you know gerard truesdale no gerard gerard runs a program called crossroads when i did a i did a workshop last week where he had me uh -huh. on speaking to his kids that's the guy i'm trying to get on as well right now okay and uh i know how's mara doing she's doing great yeah she's in there she's working around the house we're both working around the house right now i'm gonna try to do this meeting and then uh go outside you know work in the yard a little bit i like to get my work done early in the day because i'll you know later on in the afternoon i'll start chilling out relaxing you know so I gotta, you know, she's working around the house. Right. We want to try to maybe go down to the, to the country. We're not gonna really try to be around anybody, but just get in the car and drive down right. to the country. She wants to take some stuff to her mother uh, and maybe just drop it off without going in or anything like that. Just say hi to her from a distance, you know, just yeah. so we can see her, she can see us. Cause this thing is, this thing is a trip, man. It's a whole new day. It's it really is. Day. Yeah, it's a whole new day. And what we have to realize, let me try to reach out to uh, General real quick. Okay. Oh.
Okay, Sean, you know what I'm gonna do, man? What's going on? I'm gonna go ahead and start the meeting. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, but I can't seem to get in touch with anybody right now. You know, and I'm not gonna put too much energy in that. Um, for whatever reason, you know, it is what it is. Let me try one more time. Welcome to the right. My man Lamont has said he was trying to get his uh, internet to work, but he's not even answering his phone. But I was just going to put him on speaker. He can just be on speaker. He don't have to see the video. And I only set this up to 30 minutes, so I don't want to waste a whole lot of time trying to get everybody on the call, you know. Yeah, I think once it goes out, I think you could just, um, I don't know if you can actually just go back and just, uh, yeah, just follow back in. Um, yeah. So so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get started, man, because, you know, I believe in whatever, whoever's supposed to be there will be there. Whoever, whoever's not there, you know, I guess what's supposed to be there or something. I don't know. Um, but anyway, um, so here's what I want to start out, man. I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about um, some stuff that I've been putting some ideas together behind as far as black men working together, okay? And when I say that, I'm talking about mentorship, you know, being mentors and being support for each other, being role models for each other, being whatever you might need your, your other brother to be for you. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's encouragement, you know, being able to reach out. I mean, you might be going through something that you feel like maybe, man, I, can't, I ain't got nobody that I can talk to about this, but you know what, let me call Mike. And I know Mike right. will just listen. If, he, if nothing else, he'll just listen to me. You know, sometimes that's all we really need, man. We just need somebody to listen. Sometimes right. you know, we might be going through something and we might actually have the answers in our head, but we just need to talk to somebody to get it out. Somebody to bring it out. Yeah, and then a way to bring it out. And once we bring it out, we realize we had the answers all along. But without having that way to get it out, you know, we, we end up going crazy, man. And so particularly with what's going on right now with this coronavirus thing. And what's really been on my spirit is what happens after this all sort of blows over, okay? Like we were just talking about. I truly believe there are gonna be great works for, I'm just gonna say for, for again, opportunities, right? There are gonna be opportunities for great works for someone to do. Now the question becomes, who are going to be those someone or some people or some bodies that are going to do these works? And I believe, I truly believe that there's work that I have to do coming out of this. And not only just me by myself, because nobody can do it by themselves, but me right. working with a group of other people to do the works. Okay. Whatever those works might be. Uh, Zoom meeting, meeting is deleted. Okay. That's something else. Um, I'm getting these notices and I need to know how to shut these notices off my, my computer so I don't get distracted. But again, um, you know, what are the opportunities going to be coming out of this coronavirus thing? And what are the opportunities going to be for us particularly? And we got to start thinking about that now. We can't wait till we come out of the virus situation and then start looking around saying, okay, where are the opportunities? And how do I capitalize or how do I take advantage of them? Can't wait till it's then. You got to be doing it now, okay? So, in meeting people like you, Lamont, uh, a couple of other brothers I'm working with, uh, Ger Gerard Truesdale. Gerard runs a, a mentoring program for younger men, you know, 14, 15 years old. He's mentoring that group. You know, we need to be working with a guy like him because he's working with a group of younger men. And we need to all be pulling our resources together as to how we can help each other. That's what it's all about. It's all about collaborative collaboration. You know, you may have, you and Shamika may have some ideas of what you guys want to do coming out of this, 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 this epidemic. But what you're going to need, you're going to need, you're going to need resources to be able to draw from and strength and resources. You're going to be able to reach out to certain people and say, okay, we're going to need some help doing this. Who can we reach out to? 
And it's all about the three degrees of separation. You might need a resource and you might reach out to me. I'll reach out to somebody else who will reach out to somebody else who will bring you that resource that you need. OK, so my biggest thing is working with men, particularly black men, and how we sort of not necessarily redefine ourselves, but we reevaluate and we re almost redefine what our what our agenda is going to be moving forward. OK, I don't know if you caught and I purposely did not watch it yet. But uh, P. Diddy had a state of emergency summit. OK. All right. So your microphone is muted just in case you don't know, but and that's cool. But um, yeah, I'm just listening. OK, OK, cool. All right. So P. Diddy had this state of the union summit. I and mean, if you see it, just nod your head. On okay. remote. Yeah, on remote. Right, on remote. Right, yeah. So here P. Diddy is. And I'm not just saying all of a sudden he's getting you know conscious and he's becoming aware and, and alarmed at what's been going on. But look, brother, this is some stuff I've been talking about for 30 years. Right. I'm no new jack to this, okay? I'm 56 years old. I was involved in stuff like this when I was 24 years old. 24, I was working for the airline and I started getting involved. I started reading Black Enterprise Magazine a lot. And I started talking about a lot about how Black people could have their own self-sufficiency, re regenerating their economy. All those things. I met all kinds of people that have been involved in it, okay? Some of the most baddest people you can meet that are involved in trying to get people to re you know, collectively gather their resources to uplift their community. So this is nothing new to me. I knew long time ago, way before today, long before P. Diddy came out last week, okay, last Thursday, I believe it was, and said, hey, there's a state of emergency. No, dude, it's been a state of emergency. It's been, yeah. It's been a state of emergency. You, you, you bring a light to it now, but it is what it is. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to shoot that man down for bringing light to it now. Okay. But some of us have been out here for, for years talking about this stuff. Okay. So it, it gets back to a renewed sense of how do we move forward? What are we doing going forward? And what, what I believe is we have to have some kind of common agenda. In other words, you might be doing your thing, I might be doing my thing, Lamont might be doing his thing, but at the end of the day, we're still we still have some kind of common thread that weaves us together. Okay. Right. Where we're still, even though we're doing our own different thing, we're still working toward the same goal. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah. So my thing is here's my thing. My thing is gonna be working with ex offenders, okay, people that have come out of prison, limited opportunities. How can we help these people? You know, People who I had, a, I had an idea. I had an idea for some stuff like that also. Okay, good. Start, we, starting, a, starting a temporary service for ex offenders. There you go. There you go. We, we, we can work on something like that together. D'Angelo, you know D'Angelo Galloway? I know him, but I don't know him like personally. Yeah, I know Okay, him. so D'Angelo, I've been working with him. I've been trying to mentor with him, right? And, uh, you know, D'Angelo, he's, he's straight, straight thug, man. He's, he's from the streets, you know? But I see a lot of promise in him, man. I see a lot of potential in him. And that's my thing is, my thing is trying to help the people who may have lost their, here's what I'm gonna say about this. And I, I know I'm sort of jumping around a little bit, but I think this will make a whole lot of sense to you when I explain it to you like this. I personally believe that each one of us has what I call a champion within them, a champion. That person that God created us to be and be the best at it, okay, whatever it might be, a champion. But what happens is we're born into different circumstances, things happen in our lives, and stuff gets piled on that champion, okay? Life gets piled on that champion. And before long, that champion, is he gets buried under all of this rubble, all this rubble of life circumstances and things that happened to you in your life and just misfortune and all those kind of things, right? But that doesn't mean that that champion is dead. That champion is still there, and it's a matter of trying to go in and rescue that champion and pull him out, okay? And so in doing that, sometimes you got to have somebody to help you dig away the rubble. All right, let's get him, man. Let's go get him. Let's go rescue him. Dig away that rubble. Move that rock. You know, move that boulder. Get that crane and get that boulder out of here and reach down and pull that man out. Let's pull that champion out. Pull that champion out. You know what I'm saying? You have a champion in you, man. 
you know, you may be more in touch with your champion than some people might be. And that's what happens is some of us are more in touch with our champion than others. Some of us don't even realize we even have a champion in us. And it's, it takes people like me to say, hey, look, man, there's a champion in you. And if you, even if you don't realize it, I'm going to help you understand and, what, and realize what that might be. I'm going to help you dig down and help you try to pull that out. So I see, I see potential in a lot of, and everybody I meet, man, I see not just what I see on the surface, but what I see the potential of what they could be, what, what God created them to be. I see a lot of potential in you. I see a lot of potential in Shamika. And don't get, don't get me wrong, it's not like you're not living up to your potential because in your own way, you might be, okay? But my job is to make sure and, and help assist you and her to do that, to be the best that you can be as, as far as I can, as much as I can. You know, I'm not saying I'm the savior and I'm gonna rescue everybody because I can't and I won't. But what I can do in the best of my ability, if I can help somebody, what did Martin Luther King say? If I can help someone as I pass along, if I can cheer them with a word or a song, then my living would not have been in vain. And that's what it's all about. It's about what what are, what are my talents and abilities? And how can I help people as I, as I travel along? And how can I help them be the best that they can be? And not only that, but in doing so, we that person will go out and help somebody else and go out and help somebody else. And before you know it, we're all uplifting each other. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes. Yes. We all have a responsibility to not only pursue our own greatness in life, but also to help other people pursue their greatness in life. You know what I'm saying? So, so often we get caught up in, you know, let me just do my thing. Let me just focus on me and do my thing, stay in my lane. But it's not always all, always about that. It's about sometimes, okay, let me do my thing. But also, let me be trying to help somebody else and pull somebody else along as I'm trying to do my thing. Does that make sense? Like a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's what it's all about, man. Just really, I wanted to start some dialogue between what I'm wanting to do, you know, and, and you know, again, hopefully get you all's input and participation. Uh, one of the things I want to do is create a group of men that represent, um, you know, a new attitude, a new way of uh, trying to be strong, positive black men, for not only for our families, but for our communities. You know, how we can go into our communities and help some of these young kids, man. You know, why do you think some a lot of these young kids, the only thing they want to do is be a rapper? Because that's all they see. That's all they see. The only thing they see is an example of a black man being successful is being a rapper. And then give me, don't get me wrong, there's nothing with being a rapper, but there's more to black men than that. You know, we're so much more. We can be anything we want to be. Doctors, lawyers, space shuttle drivers, astronauts. I mean, we can be anything. Pilots. Pilots, we can be anything. And, but it's a matter of giving that exposure to the kids and letting them see exactly. some of the other options other than just being a rap star or a basketball player or a football player. Because the reality is, here's what happens. They, they, if those are the only two examples they see and they shoot for that, the reality is that there's a strong chance they won't make either one of them. And then they're sitting around saying, okay, now what do I do? Well, let me just, let me just do anything that comes easy. And an idle mind is the devil's playground. So now you got, you know, a kid that's 18, 19, 20 years old, 24, 25, you know, still trying to be a rapper, realizing his, his chances are limited that he might become a rapper, a, a rapper that can make a living at it. Okay. Now he's like, okay, what do I do now? He's he completely lost. And if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. So what we right. want to be able to do is offer some options that other the kids can look at other than just, you know, if they see other role models, if they see a guy like Sean, Bradley coming into the community, into the community with a food truck, that he's serving off meals and stuff, or having, you know, we come into the community and we throw, you know, cookouts, you know, for the community where we're, you know, giving out, you know, health aids and, you know, health information on health, information on education, information on, um, you know, and again, this is not about, you know, uh, religion, okay? Yeah. You can ex I can expose them to a religion and share with my, share with my, the personal opinions and beliefs are, but that's just for my personal opinions and beliefs. I can say this, I can say, I think as part of your overall balance in life, you should have some kind of uh, relationship with some kind of higher power than yourself, whether you want to call it God or Allah or whatever, but I'm not going to be the one saying, no, you got to be converted to a Christian and then you can be a better person. No. Okay. You know, right. I got this thing I call it, it's called a power mid. Okay. I'll show it to you real quick. I don't know if you can see this or not. Yeah. See that power, power mid? It's like a pyramid. 
And yeah. the top of the pyramid is a is God is God, your relationship with God, whatever that God is for you. And at the two bases is financial and health. So you got your money, your health, and your and your religion, your spirituality. Okay? So if you look at those three things, if you think about it, Sean, everything in your life that is of concern to you will fall under one of those three categories. Whether it be relationships, that falls under, you know, sort of your spirituality piece. And health. Your health, exercising, eating right, all of that falls under that health piece. Your money falls under the finances piece. You know, saving for retirement. How, how do I buy a house? How can I save money that, you know, if something happened to me right now, I can survive a little bit. You know, all those things. It's gonna fall into one of those three categories. And it's my contention that a person should be working every day on one of those three things. If you focus on every day, I'm gonna work on a little bit of spirituality. I get up in the morning, I meditate, and then I exercise a little bit, and then I work on making my money. Boom, you just covered all three of those power mids, okay? Aspects of a power mid. Um, you know, mentoring, giving back, that falls under that godliness in us, okay? Um, health, that's self-explanatory. Having health care, taking care of yourself, eating the right things, staying away from the wrong thing, you know? Um, finances, again, self-explanatory. How can I make money? How can I save money? How can I set aside money for retirement? How can I provide for me and my family? How can I buy a home that I've always wanted for me and my family? How can I get there from here? What is my five-year plan? What is my 10-year plan? Okay, so all those things. And if you sort of try to touch each one of those aspects of that power made every day, then every day you're working toward what? Being a better person. Every day. And you can't ask for any more than that. You can't ask any more from a person than to just try to be a better person and be the best person you can be every day. I'm 56 years old and every day I wake up, I try to be a better person than I was yesterday. Mm. That's what it comes down to, man. It's just that simple, you know? And then to be able to do what? Help share that with somebody else. So maybe some of the stuff I'm sharing with you, you might've got a word out of this today. Try to be a better person each and every day. And if I can just focus on that, no matter how I turn out, I gave my best, right? Exactly. And if, at the end of the day, if nobody else is impressed or is happy with your success or what you did do or what you didn't do, doesn't matter. What'll matter is what you feel that you accomplished. If you can feel like, Every day I try to be better in my life, every day. And yeah, I might not have done this, or I might not have gotten here, I might not have done that, but that's irrelevant. What I did was with the best I could do, and I'm happy with that. That's what comes back, that's what it comes back to. If you know, I mean, I'm gonna leave you with this. We got like two or three minutes left. I mean, when I used to play football in high school, and you've heard this before, and you, you know, your coach, you'd lose a game, and the coach would say, don't, you guys got nothing to be still ashamed about because you gave it your best. And even though you lost the game, you put you put your best effort in it and you got nothing to be ashamed of. That's what it really comes back to. At the end of your life, whether no matter what you did, when, they, when you add up the score, okay, it doesn't matter what the score is. What matters is, did you work every day to try to be the best you could be and left enough, as little as you could on the floor? Did you, or you left as much as you could on the floor and taken as little with you to the grave of you? When I'm done, I want I want people to be able to say, Mike left everything on the floor. He left everything on the floor and he took nothing with him to the grave. All of his greatness, his talents, his abilities, he tried to give it away, leave it on the floor. And he took nothing with him to the grave. So all you see right there is just a body, an empty body. Because he left everything on the floor for us, y'all. That's what I want people to be able to say. And that's it, that's it, that's, that's, that's what it comes down to. So we'll continue on, man. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely have more conversations, chat sessions like these. This was designed right here just to be nothing more than a chat session, not really trying to lay anything down, but to try to start get people to talk to each other and figuring out how we can maybe form some kind of consensus of something we can all work on together, even though we're working on our own things individually. We can maybe work on something together, you know, no matter what that might be or what it might look like. And we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see if it evolves. So I know I monopolized the conversation, but I'm gonna give you the last few minutes if you got, if you want. It may cut us off. Uh, I think I set it up for like 30 minutes, so it may cut us off right at 11:30. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna let you speak for that. Uh, pretty much everything that you said. That's pretty much like everything what I had envisioned what I want to do. Um, 
Like I spend a lot of time at the schools. Like I go talk to young black, I mean, not just black kids, but kids period. Right, right. Male right. and females. Um, mainly that's what's needed in today's time. I feel like a lot of people, I feel like why you see like with the whole Diddy situation, why you see like a, res like not a resurgence, but you see these people, cause I think they feel it in their heart too. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot of people like, you know, I take the Jay-Z's and stuff. Like I listen to Jay-Z's music now. Just the lead up to what he was sounding like years ago. He had stuff that he was talking about now. He was mm -hmm. saying it back then. It's like they was putting the uh, medicine in the food. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think now in today's time, they just feeling like we got to give them medicine. Yeah. Putting yeah. the medicine in the food, they ain't getting to them like it needs right. to. So we just got to right. put the medicine out there. Go straight to them. Like, yeah. Everything that what you talking about, everything I've been envisioning, it's time to give people the medicine. Stop trying to give them the food. Just get, hey, look, this is what you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So having programs like this to mentor kids is get just get down in the trenches with them. Yeah. yeah. Going down to the going down to the hoods, going down yeah. to, you know what I'm saying, these improper areas. And, and it takes for people to represent and to look a certain way to right. talk to these kids. Right. Because they're used to seeing the drug dealers and they used to seeing the hustles and stuff coming right. from each other. Dog. Right. How's it gonna look when you know you got a doctor or a lawyer coming looking like just like one of them? Driving the same car as one of them, they gonna say and flying look, and flying airplanes. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right. Flying an airplane, yeah. right? It gives them a different perspective. Like you said, the only thing they see is the the rappers. Right. They see the athletes. Right. But they don't see these other people. They don't see the lawyers. The lawyers don't come down here to talk to them. Right. Right. If anything, they just talk to them when they come to their office and they need, uh, you know, to get out of a charge or anything. Right. Right. So we have to go out here and we have to go out here and represent ourselves. We have to go out here and start talking to the kids because we don't, they don't see us. They not going to seek us. They're yeah. they going to go to the first thing they see. They're going to turn the TV on. They're going to turn on, the, uh, they're going to get on social media. Yeah. This is what they see. But if yeah. they can see these people right here in front of their face, mm -hmm. then you can sit there in front of a bunch of kids and say, hey, I was a pilot. Well, yeah. how'd you do that? And yeah. you can give them, like you said, you want to give it to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm going to wrap it up, man, because I, I don't want this to cut us off before I say we say our goodbyes to each other. You and Shamika have a great weekend, man. Have a happy holiday. Happy Easter. Um, we're going to continue on with this. I try to pull a couple more meetings together so we can just start the dialogue between folks. And then we'll see where it goes, man. All right? I'm excited, man. Okay, me too, brother. I love you guys. And stay safe. And tell, tell, uh, tell Shamika I said hello. All right. We love you too, man. All right. Peace, man. All right. All right. Peace, man. Bless us.